Wow. Wow. I'm super excited I'm coming in before the music ends. Wow. Wow. <laughs> well, I'm just fired up, man. This is Pals Professional Zam. I'm the show. I'm Tommy D. And look, I'm just thrilled. Yeah, last night was an incredible <laughs> night. My buddy, my pal, Valerie Heffron, the visionary behind this whole mission that we're on, this whole journey that we're on. You had this vision about the Compassion Awards. And last night it, it happened. It took place. 75, 80 people in a room out in Melville, Long Island, celebrating three very special animal advocates. I mean, look, you know what? If I didn't have something really long all day that I had to deal with, I would have slept in, but I had to go to my kid's school. So I'm scurrying up the stairs of the attic just to be here in time. Val knows that. I'm here to get it done. But I mean, the energy in the room last night, Valerie, with these folks, it, we call it the Compassion Awards. It's a bunch of folks who are really committed to advocating and educating us on behalf of the voiceless. Animals that cannot advocate on their own. Animals that cannot protect themselves because of certain scenarios that they're up against. When Valerie came to me with this idea for the show, you know, didn't know where it was going to go. It happened a year ago. I mean, we've been doing this for a year, Val, like that, like the snap of a fingers or the walk up a flight of stairs, like I just did, which is why I'm winded. But I will tell you, it was, Val, I mean, let's, let's, we didn't even really have a chance to download because what I had, what I was dealing with, like on the other side of things today. So why don't we just do it in front of people? What, what did you think of last night? I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it folks but but the reason why is because i wish i was wearing like one of those fitbit watches but you know i was just running around and connecting with people that both i haven't met um outside of like facebook or zoom reconnecting with people i haven't seen in years like before covid and the best part about it is that they're all animal lovers and they were all so excited and happy to be there. I'm getting text messages today and PMs, DMs, whatever they're called all day. Oh my God, this was the best event. When are you doing this again? When's the next one? Tomorrow. Like, what? Oh, no. I was saying tomorrow, like to those oh, people. Tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. yeah tomorrow. And <laughs> people have ideas for like, you know, thoughts of, um, I guess, nominating people who are worthy of recognition as well. Um, and I really want to just, I want to point out two, uh, two things that really made the event also very special, which was actually the refuge. Compliments all day about the food, all day, every day. Oh, like yeah. last night, everyone's like, oh my God, did you try this? Did you try the yeah. lobster rolls? The appetizers, the appetizers were on point. I mean, like they yeah, were and plenty of it, and pl and and the vegans were happy, which is a, a very important piece of this equation. A lot of animal lovers are vegetarian or vegan. Coming up to me, like, did you try this vegan beef bowl or whatever? Did you, did you try the avocado toast? Like, did you try the eggplant parm? I mean, yeah. everyone was so happy, and and love the vibe. Like the vibe was just cool. We got super lucky. It was perfect weather, so comfortable. Right. And the other component that came together, I thought that was like, I had never worked with this particular person before, but the DJ, ah, yeah. on point. I didn't plan on dancing. Right. I couldn't stop dancing. I was like, oh my God, he's playing old he school. Had, because, he had, because he had old school freestyle on for us, which I got a couple of videos of you dancing. So we're not going to put that on the internet. There is. But I will say this. I shared them with you, but I'm not going to yeah. share with the whole world. Unless you want me to. I will tell you, that's that's actually DJ Crazy Eddie. And I love him. We took a picture together. Check him out. Yeah. On, so I started following him on Instagram last night. So <laughs> We had a good time. Like he even played like one of our awards is called the Bob Barker award. It was like, he did, burr, 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 you know, yeah. soundtrack from the, from the price is right. I, I couldn't believe it. He was so on point, but uh, you know what? All of these little things have to come together so that everyone's happy. And you know what? In addition to that, I mean, of course we have to thank our sponsors. Everybody was fantastic, but you could see everyone's appreciation for the honorees. And that's who it was really all about. It was about recognizing those people that are, you know, saving dogs from kill shelters, trying to impact, put a dent in the overpopulation of feral cats, saving wounded animals that are 
technically wildlife, deer, swans, you know, hawks, uh, possum, raccoon, squirrels, whatever, and also passing legislation so that it becomes a better world for the animals in general. So, I mean, I, I'm, I'm in love, obsessed. Part of me is kind of happy it's over because I'm so tired. The other part of me is like, I can't wait another year to do it again. <laughs> let's be honest, because because it's you and me, we probably won't. But let's just put that in the universe. It probably won't be an annual. It'll probably be biannual, which means we got to we got to do one in six months. So you know, back to the drawing board. Back to the drawing board. Let me yeah. read you all something. So here's here's a vision that Valerie and I had, and you know, it's funny because I think we've we're in the vision. We're living it. It says we want to amplify the message that we believe the bond between animal letter lovers is incredibly strong. We want to support each other in business by building a compassionate network so that everyone wins. Especially the animals. <laughs> but we want to support each other. We're doing it. I mean, there were 75, 80 people in a room last night doing business. You know, our friend, uh, uh, you know, Rob Tucker, the canine shop, he had his whole crew there. That was so cool. You know, I was yeah. taking people and bringing them over. They One woman came with me. I really, I want to meet Rob. You know, I want to talk about the raw food. You know, real dogs eat raw, the whole thing. We're dragging people around to meet Rob. I mean, it was like, Val, it was, we're connectors, you and I. So that's our world, yeah, yeah. right? So like, yeah. I, like, I'm good at like three things. One is growing hair. The other is walking around a room and connecting people. I'm still trying to figure out what the third thing is, but it's Your like. great father. <laughs> that too. Certainly, I was just running the fun run at school. So that's where I'm running from right now. Since I know. I and I, I started making a list of all of these introductions that I, I want to put together. Like, I mean, I really believe, just imagine, ima like, okay, let me just mention this one thing. And I'm so sorry, Rebecca, uh, Raquel, yeah. we're, we're going to get Rebecca's on my head. But let me just mention this one thing. Example. Um, so Tito's vodka, Tito's vodka, Tito's handmade vodka donated $500 to each charity last night. Contour Mortgage was there. I didn't even know that they are um, training a, a, a dog, a puppy to be ready to be, a, a, I guess, a therapy animal for a veteran. Right, Champ? Yeah, Champ is the name of the dog. And this is my whole point. They are also, um, they called me up one day, their marketing manager, shout out to Jenny Nielsen, calls me up and says, we want to, as the company, um, pay for adoption fees for our clients. So if they use us, we close on a, on a house, um, we're going to take care of the adoption fee for a cat or a dog um, or a rabbit. I gave her the names of reputable rescues. Imagine what a better place this world would be if every company, every person in business thought of a way, even if it's small, even if it's putting a coffee can out on your counter saying, please support this shelter or whatever. Imagine if we all did that, just unbelievable. The, the impact we would have is, forget it, it's countless. <laughs> Yeah, well, it would be special if everybody did it, but you know what it is? It's even special if we just put all the ones who are doing it and who are already in the know, in one community, in one room, together, right. network, connect, and do that. Yeah. And I mean, let, let's, I, I mean, we can get back into the, the Compassion Awards at different points throughout the show, but I, I, I'm just fired up between that and what I've been running around on the field, helping kids yeah. like run around all day. I'm like, And I can't wait to learn about our guests today. I want to do that. So we're going to go right into that. So I want to say this. I know Raquel for a number of years, Raquel Serafino. Uh, our company has been doing business with her firm. I don't talk much about it on the show, but I'm one of the partners in the Vanguard Insurance Agency, rebranded. So I got to give you our new name. We're finally out there, rebranded as Vanguard Benefits. Check yeah. in. With I'll tell you about what we're, you know, our rebrand and stuff like that. But bottom line is we're an employee benefits firm and we work with businesses and nonprofits to help them as they're making their benefits decisions to utilize benefits to attract and retain talent. What do you mean benefits, Tommy? Health insurance and ancillary benefits like dental and vision. One of the solutions that we've been using probably even before I'm part of the firm for about 20 years, we've been connected to a company called Health Pass New York, do a lot of work with Health Pass. Uh, Raquel Serafino is with us. She's an account executive with Health Pass. She is our go-to. She is a perfect partner for us always there when we need her. And that we could talk, maybe she'll tell us a little bit about Health Pass. But, you know, everybody these days, it's not just about what you do from your nine to five, what your gig is, what you get paid to do. You know, some people have volunteerism. You know, me, I'm always talking about days of service and things like that. You know, other people have the side hustle, the side gig. I mean, I will tell you with my ADHD, 
trust me, I play around with a lot of side gigs and side hustles. Um, but, I, you know, when it comes to people like Raquel, she's taken her passion for art and utilize it for what we're talking about, what we're talking about, supporting animals, supporting rescues. I know Valerie's going to be mad because we're about to go to a break. Raquel, we need uh, to get a conversation. I knew that was coming. I knew that sigh was coming. I knew it. I knew it. I know my partner. All right, so I'm an artist. I got into painting as a way to break the monotony that usually comes with being a business professional. Totally get it. Raquel, say hello. We're going to go to commercial anyway, but say hello. Let's get started. Hi, hello, howdy. I'm Raquel. Uh, after commercial, I guess we'll talk a lot more, but thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm super excited to be here. We're super excited. But just tell me, how did you start the art? Tell me that. Let's get them, let's get them excited when we come back. I, I never was uh, professionally trained. You know, this was just like something that day to day you go to work, you come home and I'm like, oh man, I, I got to break this up somehow. So yeah, YouTube videos, uh, self-taught and just those, those little painting classes, believe it or not, really inspired me so yeah then I just started painting my own paintings at home and oh um, my god a bit more about it yo paintings I, am, I love that go ahead Val I'm jealous I I have no like that ability to draw or even you know I'm the person that gets picked picked last for Pictionary I really am no you you'd be surprised those <laughs> intensive classes actually after going to a number of those I began teaching there so yeah, being someone like you like I'll never be able to do this and then step by step they say you know dip the brush in the blue paint draw a line here and someone's telling you step by step what to do I mean you realize oh I actually I actually can do this I've tried, yeah, yeah. I've tried. my wife did this at a, <laughs> those paint and sip classes and it stays up oh. here so I knew, like, that's cool she didn't think she had any talent like that and i will tell you i draw one thing and one thing only it's the picture on my <laughs> shirt i mean self-portraits of the nonprofit sector oh my connection. God. <laughs> that's the only thing i draw but the point of the youtube before we go to break and i know we got to do that but before we do that you know the point of of youtube raquel i totally dig that everything i don't know how to do i go to youtube shout yeah. out to youtube, YouTube it. Shout out to YouTube, man. You know what? Uh, yeah. You know, it, it's just, it's all there. But again, isn't that the level playing field? We're fortunate as challenging life is, might be this time in history. We're fortunate, man, you got access to everything. You can learn that thing you don't know how to do. Like my wife built an entire patio in my backyard, not knowing how to do it. And then early COVID gets like 600 pavers and a whole bunch of sand and built a patio. She probably didn't even use YouTube. She's, she's something else with this. But <laughs> like, if I got to like, you know, anything more than like YouTube. I'll have to show you the patio. We'll talk about that. That's a whole it's a whole nother show about <sighs> about building a patio in your backyard. Uh look, Raquel, we're glad you're here. We're gonna dive in this conversation. We got plenty of time, although we don't have plenty of time. So let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. Professionals and animal lovers show. I'm out of breath. We'll be right back. <laughs> Are you a business owner? Do you want to be a business owner? Do you work with business owners? Hi, I'm Stephen Fry, your small and medium-sized business or SMB guy, and I'm the host of the new show, Always Friday. While I love to have fun on my show, we take those Friday feelings of freedom and clarity to discuss popular topics in the minds of SMBs today. Please join me and my various special guests on Friday at 11 a.m. on talkradio.nyc. Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your conscious consultant. And on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc. Are you on edge? Hey, we live in challenging, edgy times, so let's lean in. I'm Sandra Bargeman, the host of The Edge of Every Day, which airs each Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on talkradio.nyc. Tune in live with me and my friends and colleagues as we share stories and perspectives about pushing boundaries and exploring our rough edges. That's The Edge of Every Day on Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC. Uplift, educate, empower.
we're back. So listen, so funny thing, last night they played the full song to our show and I was like called out on the microphone. I was like, wow, I didn't even know there was more to the song. I thought it was like the 30 <laughs> seconds that we play here before the show. That show, you know, when DJ Crazy Eddie, yes, insane. If you go back to Crazy Eddie back in the day, like we did here in New York. But, you know, DJ Crazy Eddie, the whole song, Val, I didn't know you bought the whole song. Like, I thought we only owned, like, 30 seconds of the song. All right. It wasn't really a choice. Like, no. you just, you, you could buy this. It's not like you could buy, like, you know, 10 seconds of the song. But let me just say this. I love our song. And I decided, I just said this to Barry, the, uh, like, two days ago. I was like, why don't I ever play this song? Like, like in its entirety. And I feel like it's a really good song for, um, while you're typing or working, you know, like background music, because there's no words to kind of distract you. But anyway, I, I love, love yeah, I love to call out Alexa and go, Alexa, spa music. Alexa, do this. Oh, like, that's a good Tommy. idea. And she always goes like, she goes, hey, Tommy D. And I go, what's up, Alexa? How you doing, kid? And then we, she doesn't say that. But so, so here's the thing. Um, Raquel, <laughs> we have a rule on the show. Okay. And this is certainly for our Facebook viewers. We have a rule on the show. When somebody enters the screen, they must be introduced. You were, while we were at break, you were showing, you were moving your camera around. Yes. Who is yeah, there's somebody in the room with me. This is Alaska, the puppy. Oh, Valerie, are you in love already? Oh, I want a pit bull so badly. She's so, a good girl. She's oh a my very goodness. good girl. Um, Beautiful. She's got the separation anxiety. So oh. whenever I'm working, she's got to be right right there next to me yeah. she's not like to be alone there's, yeah there's a handful of animals though because as i'm reading what you prepared for me in my notes it says you recently entered a sort of brady bud bunch excuse me brady bunch situation with your boyfriend but instead of human children you're raising pit bulls and a tabby cat so this is a this reminds me of somebody that i know very well who's in the zoom meeting with us right now who has several <laughs> animals um we'll just go, we'll pretend we'll just say her name rhymes with valerie and um, <laughs> how many animals uh, yeah. break down the, break down the animals for us raquel what do you got so we have two pit bull uh mixes and a tabby cat but, you know, when you and I met, Tommy, we were at one of these, you know, health insurance business lunches. And I remember you asking me, why do you have a cat? I, I somehow brought up my cat and you said, why do you have a cat? And I said, I'm a single girl in my 30s. I'm supposed to. I thought I, I didn't know I had an option. So a lot has changed since then. Oh, the, the cat just entered the room, actually, too. This is um, Ash. I don't know. He's all right. He's rubbing my leg now. So that's Ash. He's my boy. He was my... Uh, He's who I came with. I came with just Ash. It was just us. And then uh, Alaska and Juno, they, they've been here. So yeah. everyone's getting along pretty well. You know, you think pit bulls and cats, you get a little nervous. It was very nerve wracking at first. You had to see us. It was actually hilarious. We laugh about it now, but they say to introduce the animals, you gotta like have the dog on a leash and just let them look at each other through like a crack in a door. Now they're like all over each other. It's yeah. fun. I think just like a month or two ago, it was like, oh my God, the cat's gonna die. I'm so afraid. Everything. They crazy. usually settle it. You know, there's usually like a lot of running around and, and, you know, maybe a little hiding under a sofa. My, my pets have not settled it. They're, they're, they have declared absolute war. And, um, I'm actually more concerned about my dog who's smaller because, um, my two cats were outside cats. Puffy was a feral allegedly. And anyway, um, if she gets cornered one day, he, I'm more afraid for my dog, but like, but you have to be, and, and the pit bull mixes yeah. are, are big dogs, but the cats are, they're afraid of him. He runs the show around here one right. swipe and they know, yeah. who's boss. and it's really just Alaska. She's a puppy. She's one, she's adorable, but she's dumb yeah. and <laughs> she's so curious. She just, she wants to sniff his butt so bad. And I'm like, <laughs> he's not a dog. They don't like that. He doesn't get it. So yeah, one or two uh, slashes and she kind of knows now. I'll still hear him though around the house hissing and I'm like, all right. He, yeah, he they'll know. settle it. They yeah. settle it out. But um, I have, so I have to ask you, did you start by painting your own pets? Yes, actually I have one here. I have I have Ash. Oh, Ash. that's so good. This is one that I oh. keep for myself, not for sale. This is yeah. That's oh, cool. it's beautiful. I love the colors, like the ears. You really captured like the pink. Look at Alaska. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> a picture. For, for those of you listening, Alaska is trying to smell the picture, everybody. <laughs> the painting. 
did you so you really like did you have any art like when you were a kid were you artistic did you dig it did you I want always love my coloring books you know my parents will tell you that I was big until anytime I'd go to the doctor or I, you know afterwards at the pharmacy I'd always get like a coloring book and some crayons and I hang out at the table and I take my medicine and I'd color but that was really it I mean I think everybody likes coloring books when they're little kids right it's not it's not like a unique trait but after that, never really was interested, didn't think I could, you know, if I can go back now, I would have done that all along, like I would have went to school for that, I would have made a career out of that, I would have just been, people do it, they do it all the time, especially now with YouTube and with um, Instagram, everybody is yeah. artists, you could succeed big time. Back when we were kids, it was like, no, nah, you're an artist. You're poor. You're never going to make it. I appreciate you saying when we were kids. We appreciate you bringing us into your your yeah, age, really. era. And age. That was the very very sweet of you to do that. Yes, I, I consider it we. <laughs> that, was, that was quite generous. I, I'll have to agree with that. Um, yeah, I kind of feel that way about cooking. Like, I forgot who asked, but uh, somebody was saying, if you weren't doing what you do now or, or something like that, like what other career might you have chosen? And I was like, I feel like culinary school would have been a great experience. But so here's here's a few questions I have. Um, now that you've been doing this, I guess, for some time, um, do people like reach out to you and say, here's a picture of my dog or whatever? You know, can you can you draw my pet and I'll pay you? I mean, are, are they commissioning you or do you have a website or? Yeah, like, that's what exactly involved into. That's exactly what's happening. Um, I do have a website and I do have an Instagram and I do art shows now and then. So anytime I hear of something going on in the city or local, I'll try to set up my stuff and people show up and it's just a way to get my name out there. And this is also a way to get my name out there. So thank you, Tommy, the nonprofit sector connector. <laughs> you are. Uh, just from posting about this show and how I'm going to be on your show on my Instagram, I already got a commission to paint. Yay! something. To come. So Thank you. I don't know where my pom-poms are today. I think I've lost them. I found out one of them is at my house because <laughs> It was given to my daughter. You told me this last night. You might not remember because it was so hectic. But you said somebody thought it was a party favor and yeah. gave it to my daughter. And yeah. I told my wife this morning, I go, those are Val's pom-poms. I probably have to get that pom-pom back. No, and, no, no. I'm oh, not yeah. taking a pom-pom away from a kid. <laughs> but not, I, I, no, there's you're... another one, though. And anyway, so the whole point is I'm doing my pom-poms for you. Here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, to answer your question, yes, people would reach out to me. Um, at rockstar art is my Instagram or yeah, rockstarart.com yeah. is there. Spell it. Say it again. At rockstar. St say that, but spell it out. R A Q S T A R A R T, like rockstar, but R A Q. So it's rockstar art. That's the Instagram. And then the website is raquelserafino.com. That's kind of brand new, uh, but that's a way to get in touch with me if you do want a commission. I will share that stuff out. I think, you know, and this is obviously one of the reasons you're on the show, aside from you, my buddy, uh, is that a lot of what you do is, with these commissions is you'll then, well, well why don't you tell us what we do? Yeah, so story? recently I started taking a portion of the money that I make on these commissions and donating it to a charity of the buyer's choice. So if it's an animal portrait and they don't really have a charity that they work with, or they're like, yeah, whatever, just keep the money. I take a portion of it and I donate to a charity that I like, which is Best Friends Animal Society. Oh, so, I love Best Friends. Best Friends is great. I don't work for them, but I'll go around talking to people like I do work for them because they're awesome. They've been around for, I think since 1984. And I don't know what the direct correlation is, but in, in 1984, about 17 million animals were killed in shelters every year and since then it's down to under a million so i mean it's still a lot but it's a lot less than it was when best friends started so for those listening that don't know about best friends they have this animal sanctuary in utah and it's just this huge piece of property where they let all the animals live and they take care of them and any you know uh, hospital the surgeries just everything they just care for these sick injured animals and help them find homes did you know fun fact about best friends um that when that horrific um dog fighting ring was exposed with that piece of shit sorry i can't help it uh 
NFL player Michael Vick, best friend, when that was exposed and those dogs were saved, um, they call them the victory dogs because they were the survivors. Uh, I believe if memory serves, it was, it was 40 or 41 dogs. Anyway, best friends is, is the one, they took them, they worked with them, they rehabilitated them. And, and every single one of those dogs, except for one, got adopted and that other one was able to live out their life at the sanctuary at the sanctuary yeah and the sanctuary yeah. is a beautiful place it's also a vacation destination you can go and rent a cottage there and live in the sanctuary and volunteer i have never been i'd love to go but it looks awesome pals first pals field trip uh, i'm yelling field trip and i'm on mute field trip <laughs> get your permission slips in by the 30th we're going to utah baby <laughs> I, home of the Mormons, home of the jazz, home for the sanctuary. I'm going to share, when we go to break, I'm going to share your uh, your Instagram. Oh, come on! It. It, it, Val, it's part of the show, okay? It's part of the show. Breaks are just part of life. You know why? Because I'm going to tell you about life. I'm going to drop some knowledge on you. You can't have the sweet without the bitter. Because the sweet ain't nothing if there ain't a little bitter. And you can't have the show without the commercial break. Just how it goes. I'll tell you, D. We're going to go to a break. When I share this, I'm telling you, Raquel, on my other monitor, I have your Instagram. And Ozzy's eyes are, where did you see this, Mick Collins? Ozzy's eyes are like staring into my eyes. And he's telling me, shh, I, I believe it's Ozzy Osbourne. Or it's, if you had her, you know, it's a picture of an old woman. We'll be right back in your comments when we come back. We're back, pals. Are you passionate about the conversation around racism? Hi, I'm Reverend Dr. TLC, host of the Dismantle Racism Show, which airs every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern on talkradio.nyc. Join me and my amazing guests as we discuss ways to uncover, dismantle, and eradicate racism. That's Thursdays at 11 o'clock a.m. on talkradio.nyc. Are you a small business trying to navigate the COVID-19 related employment laws? Hello, I'm Eric Sauver, employment law business law attorney and host of the new radio show, Employment Law Today. On my show, we'll have guests to discuss the common employment law challenges business owners are facing during these trying times. Tune in on Tuesday evenings from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern time on talkradio.nyc. Hey everybody, it's Tommy D, the nonprofit sector connector coming at you from my attic. Each week here on talkradio.nyc, I host a program, Philanthropy in Focus. Nonprofits impact us each and every day, and it's my focus to help them amplify their message and tell their story. Listen each week at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time until 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC at www.talkradio.nyc. Now broadcasting 24 hours a day. And we are back. All right, so check it out. So this is a pal show, the Professionals and Animal Lovers show. Val, this thing. Hey, Joby, what's up, dog? Saw you last night. You look handsome. He had Aww. devil Raquel. He had a devil costume on last night. Like he was like he's a little early for Halloween, Joby. He was he's all he's all riled oh, up. That's cute. <laughs> Meanwhile, I had no idea where that outfit came from because we didn't bring it. And all of a sudden, like towards the end of the event, I turn around and I see my dog in a devil outfit, and I'm like. What just happens? <laughs> did Barry Heff, did you just find like random clothes? I'm talking to Barry Heffron. Did you find random clothes like in the restaurant somewhere and just put it on the dog? That's not, I, I hope that was a gift, Val. That's, you it know was what? a gift. Yeah. Right. Now, Jackie won a raffle prize and it, that was included. Oh, it was in that basket that she won. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So what she, was that prize? Uh, so she has, a, she has a dog. It was like dog, a bunch of dog stuff and she yeah. asked how many treats were in the bowl or whatever. But, um, from Donna Fiorelli, shout out to one of our right. sponsors. And she um, had like this, she has, we met her dog when we had her on the Zoom, but um, her dog is like two or three times the size of Jovi. And the outfit is definitely for like a smaller dog. So 
she gave it to us. So um, Raquel, I'm looking at some of your artwork. I didn't um, realize that you do all kind like, so I saw like Freddie Mercury, I saw um, a pair of heels as a separate piece of art. I saw another one that was like a martini glass. So you really can do pretty much everything. You're not just doing pets, right? Right, so I started out doing pretty much whatever I felt like. And then after a while, I thought, how can I gear this into some type of thematic direction and maybe even a more altruistic direction because it's cool to create things, but it's cooler to create things when you're actually helping others with it, right? So this was a little way to make it a win-win for everybody. It's, it's a win for me because I get to create something and also I, I get a little money for it, but then it's a win for the person who's purchasing it because you get to go home with an artwork and you also get to know that your cause, your shelter, your charity, whatever it is that you advocate for is also getting a little piece of the pie. I love yeah. That. So cool. That, listen, I, we talked about this too, this Metro card thing that you do. And as I understand, like it's if if I'm correct, when we talked about last time, it's tough to get Metro cards. It's like because I listen, let's be real, because and this is not an ego thing. I know you guys are all going to be like, he's so no, you wanted one of yourself, Tommy. I know you wanted a Metro card. Piece. I just want a Metro. Card. I'm commissioning you right now, Serafino, to do this. Figure it out. Come up with a price. We'll donate money to some charity. We'll make a big deal about it. I will even find a way to source the Metro cards. This is a call to action. I need Metro cards. When your Metro cards are done, please get them to me. Raquel's going to make a, what do we call it? Is it like a sculpt? It's not a sculpture. Is it? What, it's what a do collage. You... It's a Metro card collage. That's so cool. Val, what about a pals one? You and me. Thumbs up like this. <laughs> I need to see. I, I'm so like, so you do the art on the back of the Metro card? No, so Tommy, if you pull it back up, it's, it's a bunch of Metro cards chopped up that I then assemble oh, together. Oh, to put this on the oh. website. So the Metro cards are all, all the Metro card pieces are iconic New York images. So that's Breakfast at Tiffany's. It took place in New York. Oh my God, that is so good. That's Charles Bronson. Uh, that one. Oh my God. Escape from New thank York, you. Russell. Yeah, no. Thank iconic you. New York. So that's the point. Tommy D is iconic New York. Agree. He is iconic New York. You're right. That really, that's the theme. <laughs> I had to like kind of, you know, backtrack it because in my mind, I'm like, is she going to paint the back of a Metro card with like Tommy D's cartoon character? Like I was like, what? Is, I don't know. I don't know what we're talking about, but then. We'll, we'll take the gun out of Charles car. Bronson's hand and yeah. we'll make it like a microphone and we'll give yeah. him a goatee. And a, a, oh my God. And that's, you, and that's you, Tommy. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty much, pretty much you're right on actually. Yeah. But I think that'll be kind of cheating, but if I get one, I'm happy either way. So do what you got. <laughs> How many Metro cards does it take to do that? So many, too many to count. And yeah, it takes okay. forever. The hardest part is collecting the Metro cards and then assembling them, the tiny, tiny little pieces. I probably gave myself carpal tunnel. Uh, these are, people love these, yeah. um, but these I are love definitely it. the most work. Yeah. Oh my God. I, 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 want, I want to just say this, like this is one of the things that I just love and adore about artists is that is like super creative to me. Um, when I was in Florida, there's a store called Metal Arts in St. Augustine, and they commission from artists such as yourself, local artists who um, they upcycle, recycle, whichever it's called. But um, I just remember they had like a small area, like an installation, I guess. And they had this, um, all of these hanging, they look like really bright colored, beautiful fish. And they were made out of um, recycled two liter soda bottles. Ah. it was so brilliant to me but like this is right up there like I feel like it's totally um related you know you're taking totally, something people yeah. throw out it's garbage right and yeah. people are paying you for garbage basically it's <laughs> yeah but it's beautiful garbage yeah one man's trash is another man's treasure that's what I heard but look did you sell all these pieces are these gone the metro card pieces yeah all except for uh, Kurt Russell and the Subway. Those are still right. available for purchase. So if somebody wanted these and they write on the website, can they, it's contact purchase. So they would yes. just, uh, all right. So the website is R-A-Q-U, what, that was a funny word. <laughs> R-A-Q-U-E-L-S-E 
R A F I N O dot com. I recognize that last name. It reminds me of another name in my world, but Raquel Serafino dot com. And you can make an offer. They can reach out to you and connect with you on these. Or again, folks, you can have something commissioned and win, 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 because you get something great. Raquel gets to create. And then a nonprofit, a charity, a rescue of your choice is also going to get well on this deal. I don't know what's better than that, man. Raquel, we've been talking about getting you on the show for months, and it's just because things are so crazy, it, it took longer than we wanted to, but I'm glad you're here. Are you having I'm fun? I never nice. usually ask, is this fun? Though? Great time. This is amazing. <laughs> We're all having fun. The cat's here. The dog's here. We're having a great time. <laughs> it's a party. It's so, a um, Raquel, let me ask you another question. Um, as far as I, I, I have to ask this just as my business networking person, Tommy probably knows this answer, but um, as far as your line of work, who are good connections for you? Like, who do you look to meet? Tommy D. <laughs> All right. I can make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> no, so um, for, for, yeah, for my, yeah, people just like Tommy, honestly. Um, health insurance brokers that know a lot of people. And Tommy is probably the number one. Oh, wow. You're not kidding. You are not kidding. Well, that's a shout out to our team. You know, again, Ed and Vinny, Vanguard Insurance, you know, even before I was part of the, the team formally, you know, we've been dealing with Health Pass and Value. You know what it is? Health Pass is a solution for us to provide to our clients. So we we almost look at them as a carrier. So, so another carrier, they're called the private exchange model. So if we want to bring in three different carriers on the health insurance side with about 40 different plan choices, dental, vision, life insurance, all that in one solid menu of choice for our clients we get to do that and health pass provides that and they actually themselves are, are a nonprofit organization so we love working with them oh uh, oh you are so here's another question um what about this is just an, a, an idea and really none of my business but what about um you know how like people get a, a health insurance card like a physical card mm. What if you chop those up and make them into our work? <laughs> well, not a bad idea. I never thought when they that. expire, obviously, yeah. when they yeah. expire. <laughs> yeah, we got to make sure, as licensed representatives of Raquel, we must make sure HIPAA that this is HIPAA compliant. So, yeah, it does have some information on those cards. <laughs> Cut out the name, you know. But like some of them, some of them are like blue, blue and white, whatever, whatever. Right. You could, you know, machete yeah. them up. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, I've seen some like conceptual pieces where people take a bunch of uh, empty prescription bottles and they just kind of like glue them all together onto a canvas and it doesn't really look like anything. It's just a messy bunch of bottles, but the artist will then say, oh, this is to represent the uh, prescription drug problem in the country. And I mean, oh, it's, yeah. stuff. it's not pretty, you wouldn't hang it on your wall, but it's more like, oh, the concept right. yeah. means something to someone. I could do that with French fries and talk about how I have like a French fry problem. <laughs> Did you try the fries last night? My wife and I were talking about this morning, the truffle fries last night that they were passing around. I didn't eat anything because oh that's God. what I always do at my, I have to switch up because. I forced myself out. I had to, because yeah. I, I forced myself at certain points in the night, you know, but the past stuff was easy. You know, they had these little rice balls. They yeah. had, a, they had, check this out. Shout out to the refuge. They did such yeah. a great, they had grilled cheese, yep. like tiny little grilled cheese with a little like shot glass halfway filled with tomato soup. Tomato soup? I've seen that before. Oh, I love that so much. Between you and the coloring books and my grilled cheese, and my, I, I felt like a little kid. I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. And I'm trying to network and I'm like, I got tomato soup on my face, but don't worry about it. Every I know, I know. That's my problem. I don't want to like, I mean, you know how it is. It's the weirdest thing because um, let, let's say there was 90 people all told, I don't know, whatever, but like, you know, most of these people, we've either known them virtually or we've met them or we've known them for years or whatever. And like leading up to the event, months, weeks, whatever, you really don't hear for them. The night of the event, everyone, you're getting pushed and pulled all over the place. Come take a picture with me. Uh, you know, so it, it's like all of a sudden you have 90 children, but like, I don't want to, I don't want to have like, a, 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 you know, pigs in the blanket or whatever that I'm stuffing my face in your with. teeth while you're smiling in photos. Yeah, and like let's do a selfie. I'm like, oh my god, this is my worst nightmare. And it's, and it's funny too because I hate having myself photographed. Where Valerie, on the other hand, loves to be oh in. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, that's, I'm sorry. Strike that. Reverse it. It's the opposite. I can't get in enough freaking pictures. I love. 
because I'm always looking, like uh, even on the Zoom call. I don't even know if you guys are there because I'm so busy looking at me. But <laughs> <laughs> tell me the truth though. Like when you get like uh, this doesn't happen anymore. But when we were kids, you know, Raquel, when the three of us were younger, <laughs> yes, all at the same time. Right, right. When I would drop off mail and then like three days, not mail, but I would drop off film and three days later, the picture would come back. You remember how that used to work? Yes. Raquel probably never dealt with this, Raquel, because your pictures are instantly in your phone, but we used to have to wait. Did you ever have to wait for pictures? I pic remember you go to CVS pharmacy, you drop off the Kodak roll, they, you, you get so you them back. And yeah. All right. So you know what I'm talking about. Did you only, I was thumbing through, I'm not in that one. I'm not in that one. I'm not in that There. Oh, I look at I'm not in that one. I'm not in that one. I was like, oh always God. looking. I, Again, Val, it's it's probably a problem. I'll deal with no, it. With my it's so funny. It's just so the like yeah, I was I, mean, I knew I wasn't in any of them because I was the one taking them. This is before uh, selfies ever existed. And then I would go through them and and uh, I was always taking pictures that I wanted to like capture certain moments. And then I would I would take a picture and like frame it and give it to my friend. So like my friend Vanessa had a sweet sixteen surprise party at her house. I had this killer picture of somebody threw confetti and the confetti was like in a stream in the air and her jaw was like dropped to the floor. Like, so that was me. I was going through like, what's the best picture? I took my, I took pictures at my friend's weddings, like for free, you know, and I would put together like a collage or frame it. It was, it was so much fun, but yeah, no, I'm kind of, I am the opposite, we're, but that's what makes us great. We're yin and yang. But we were, but last night I would tell you about, I mean, we were like celebrities last night. Let's be real. I mean, it was that's why I don't eat. I don't are you, are you going to tell me that the guy who wants a commission of his own face is an egomaniac? I would not believe that. <laughs> it's such a harsh word. I don't know. I'm I'm maniacal, but I don't know why you have to use it like that, Serafino. <laughs> I said I don't believe it. Oh, you don't right. believe it. Oh, you don't right. believe it. Oof. It's not like he's got. It's not like he's got a self-portrait of himself on his T-shirt or anything. <laughs> right. in, in the background. background. <laughs> I feel like I feel like the scarecrow. Is he there? Is he there? He went both ways. Look, here's the thing. I don't know what this means, Mick Collins. I just had to Google it. <laughs> Collins is checking in on Facebook. He, first of all, <laughs> is the Bronson is the Charles Bronson one sold or is it still around? It's gone. Charles it's Bronson gone. is gone. All right. So so our friend Barry Heffron is saying he likes the Charles Bronson one. Val. Sounds like a Christmas gift thing, Hanukkah gift, holiday gift. Sounds like something you need to be. But, it, but her artwork is one of a kind, and that's another thing that makes it really special. It's not. It's not like you're going to get. Uh, well, Raquel, are you doing prints? No, actually, yes. Now this is a new thing. I am doing prints. So if okay. you wanted a less expensive uh, print of the Metro Card collage, it's not going to be the actual Metro Card collage, but you get a print. Of yeah. It. I, if I know Barry Heffron, and I think I do because we have the same last name for a reason. I'm going to say he wants an original. Yeah. Well, hey, listen, Barry, we can get you an original Tommy D. I'll get, I'll have her make two. You know, one, <laughs> one where I'm like this and one where I'm like this. Thumbs up left, thumbs up right. All right, but Mick, I don't know what this means. Can you do the Imagine Stone? Is that a band? What is that a call out of? Do you know what that is, Raquel? I no, thought but I can, I'm interesting. Mick, help us out with the Imagine Stone. I don't know what that is. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't know what it is. Is that the Imagine Awards Stone, the award? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. I think you know, we were talking and maybe it's something iconic New York. Make hook us up on Facebook. So I, don't I can help you. Oh, I know what it is. OK, ready? Imagine a stone. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Imagine I'm stoned. That's a whole nother show. All right. <laughs> let's take let's take Sorry, Sorry. Hey, Al, it's your favorite time of the show. Oh, We're it's break time. Yay. You see how you changed it? You totally changed your mindset around that. Yay. Break time. What are you acting? That's my talent. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Tommy D, the nonprofit sector connector coming at you from my attic. Each week here on talkradio.nyc, I host a program, Philanthropy in Focus. Nonprofits impact us each and every day, and it's my focus to help them amplify their message and tell their story. Listen each week at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time until 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on talkradio.nyc. In a post-COVID world, you may have many unanswered questions regarding your health. Are you looking to live a healthier lifestyle? Do you have a desire to learn more about mental health and enhance your quality of life? Or do you just want to participate in self-understanding and awareness? I'm Frank R. Harrison, host of Frank About Health, and each Thursday, I will tackle these questions and work to enlighten you. Tune in every Thursday at 5 p.m. on talkradio.nyc 
and I will be frank about help to advocate for all of us. Calling all pet lovers. Pet Avengers, assemble! On the Professionals and Animal Lovers show, we believe the bond between animal lovers is incredibly strong. It mirrors that bond between pets and their owners. Through this program, we come together to learn, educate, and advocate. Join us live every Wednesday at 2 p.m. at talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC at www.talkradio.nyc. Now broadcasting 24 hours a day. Oh my God, we're all talking. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> I just want to do a really quick thank you out to Barry Heffron, my husband, because um, I don't know if I even really bothered last night, but um, the truth is he's super supportive. He took care of a lot of stuff leading up to the event. Um, and he, you know, was in charge of our beloved Jovi, our dog, the entire night, who was like a celebrity himself. Everybody wanted to take a picture with my dog, which is adorable. But anyway, thank you so much, Heff. Really special. Well done. Thank you, Heff. And thank you, my crew, who was out there helping me out and supporting what we did, for sure. I think uh, especially the smaller people in my family were kind of, <laughs> kind of celebs that uh, last night, too. So this is actually, thank you, Mick, for I, I didn't, I just wasn't in the frame of mind, although I should have known when I was showing the Instagram because there was pictures of John Lennon there. So if I'm not mistaken, you know, the Imagine Stone is not too far from the Dakota. Uh, the Dakota Hotel, where tragically John Lennon was murdered back in 1980, if I'm not mistaken, it was 1980, December of 80, uh, which is a long time ago. But Raquel, this is what Mick Collins uh, is talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's, uh, that's in Central Park, right? Central Park, I, yeah. yeah, that's actually, I mean, I'm hesitant to say that I can do a Metro card collage of that and tell Tommy D that <laughs> he's not going to get his face before Mick gets his Imagine Stone. <laughs> 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 But I think that a Metro card collage of that could definitely happen. What is, I mean, all kidding aside, like what is more iconic New York than that? John Lennon, Central Park. I mean, so poetic, Mick. Thanks for the call out. I I actually am getting very emotional right now. Um, we have to work that one out. We'll figure that out, Raquel, because that's... Mm -hmm. uh, that is super, super special, Mick. Thanks for bringing that up. That'll be great. I didn't even know that existed. Oh, yeah, Val. I've been down there, like, or up there, I guess, like, on that that night. I think it must have been one year when it was, like, the 40th. Is that 1980? Maybe it was the 30th. Wow. No, it must have been the 30th anniversary of, and I went there, and everybody's, you know, singing. You know, everybody's out there. The place uh, smelled like there was a skunk that would might have been in the area. I'll just say uh -huh. that. Uh -huh. <laughs> But it smelled like a bunch of skunks. But I will say, uh, you know, people give peace a chance. People are out there singing. They give they got their guitars out. Very emotional. I mean, listen, you know, there's such a such a tragic. Uh, yeah. I always wonder, like somebody like like John Lennon, like because you see, like you see Mick, and you see these not not Mick Collins, but Mick Jagger. <laughs> you see Mick as well, but you see Mick Jagger and 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 the Stones, and and you see these other bands that are still going, which is like even um. Aerosmith still doing shows. I mean, these these guys are old, and um, I wonder what that would have been. Do you think we don't have to answer this now? But do you think the Beatles would have gotten back together? Do you think they would have done some sessions? Do you think they would have been out? What would he have done? How? What? Again, we we talk about Gandhi towards the end of this show every time, but you know, people who have changed the world, the change makers, sometimes they're not here long enough. And what could they have done had they stayed around longer? Oh, you know? no doubt. I mean, look at JFK, look at Martin Luther King. Look at, I mean, there's so many people who, um, unfortunately, a lot of times uh, people who want to do good things doesn't end well for them. But uh, hopefully we can, we can all change that. Um, anyway, Raquel, let me ask you another question about your artwork, if you don't mind. So, how long have you been doing this? Um, maybe about, you know, maybe about my adult life. So rather the last like seven or eight years. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> no, but 
That is uh, when I, well, I'm just saying because she did say we before, and I'm like, oh. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, you I feel know, like my adult life has been longer than that, Val. <laughs> <laughs> just by a little. The um, the the skill level that you are at, and and um, the fact that you got this extra creative side to you, and and you took kind of like um, a medium that most people wouldn't consider like an art supply. I just think um, like it's brilliant and you're really on a trajectory to, to become you. like a famous artist. It's Thank so cool. You. I appreciate that. I mean, I still look at my stuff and I'm like, ah, oh, this is this is crap. I gotta get better. Cause there are some really super talented, you know, I go to these art shows and I'll put my work next to somebody that's just like super intricate oil portraits i'm like wow i want to be like that guy and but you know what they all i've learned this lesson the hard way right so first of all they might think the same thing when they look at your art and say wow look at what an incredible thing she designed and executed it's and different you, styles and, and right. there's always going to be differences and nuances and there's always going to be somebody better and sometimes better but it's not somebody. better i really feel it's not bad i feel it's different I remember a long time ago, I was watching, I don't know why, I, I was watching a documentary uh, with Madonna. This is, I'm going back 20 years or something like that. And um, I remember she was in a huddle with her team. She had like her glam squad. No, she, I think they were her dancers and backup singers, right? And they all had the huddle thing going. And she said, I'll never forget it. I wasn't expecting Madonna to resonate with me, but she did. And she goes, I don't have the best voice in the world. I'm not the best singer. When I look around other people that are, you know, Grammys, opera people, whatever, she's like, I'm not the best. She goes, but I give it my best. And we are going to put on like one hell of a show. Yeah. And that's all it is, right? We all yeah. just have to bring our best. I did an art show a few years ago and you put your stuff up next to all these other people and people walk around and they either buy something or they don't. I just remember overhearing one guy walking by and he was walking around and he was looking at everyone's stuff and he kind of looked at my stuff and the people next to me. And I heard him say to the person he was with, it's just such amateur stuff. And I never forgot that. And I Did looked you ever see his like, art? No, he wasn't. Yeah. Not, he was. He was just a passerby. He was just like, all due respect, he's a plumber. All due respect, he does good <laughs> things. But like, <laughs> like it really hurt me, and I was like, man, how do I? What? And I remember going home and googling, like you said, Tommy. Nowadays, you can just look it up. How do you not seem like an amateur artist? Like I looked it up. What oh, oh my and, god! Yeah, you know, there's a professionalism to it where you kind of have a theme, and if you look at a Van Gogh, you know, oh, that's definitely a Van Gogh because he has like a unique style, and that's something that looking at my stuff, I never really had. I was just like, today I feel like painting shoes. Tomorrow I'll make Freddie Mercury. You know, you have to have like something that ties you together. So that's kind of where I was trying to gear my artwork towards just a theme a commonality between my work so you go it's, oh, it's great that you that. it's great that you use that as kind of like fuel to energize uh you know how do i get better or how do i master my craft but the truth is, is that there's always going to be be people out there like that you know there were people who who poo-pooed freddie mercury and there's people who poo-pooed you know fill in the blank like every Every actor has been rejected. Every singer has been rejected. Every, I'm sure that if it wasn't Tommy D on this podcast before we did it, and I said it to someone else, they would have been like, are you nuts? You think, you, you think you're going to have enough material to talk for an hour every week about animals and animal lovers? He was the opposite. And here we are. I was nervous coming on. I was like, man, what if I don't have enough stuff to talk about? But I <laughs> A lot of people that say that. Like, yeah. <laughs> And we always run out of time. Which, which actually, Val, if you look at the notes, if you look at the chat right now, that's exactly. I don't want to look at it. I'm not. Looking. Looking. Come on with like Howard Stern and Robin. Like this, this has been so much. awesome. We are like yes, we are like Howard and Howard. Like I, you know, there's no like Batman and Robin on the show. It's like Howard and Howard. Like it's two. So, um, look, we actually are out of time so raquel give us the way that people can get in touch with you i'm so first of all i sit on the board of an organization called the spirit of huntington art center i want you to come out we're going to do a show we're going to do something it works with all young adults doing the special needs artwork we read the hamptons art fair we did it you know just I, i'm not an artist 
I'm a board member. I know a couple people. I have some cool stuff going and I want oh, you to be. Yeah, cool. make the connection. Yeah, they, they can find me at RaquelSarafino.com or Rockstar Art on Instagram, R A Q S T A R A R T. Thank you so much for having me. This has been so much. Thank you for being here. Awesome. We appreciate <laughs> you. Uh, Mick Collins, last thing he says is better take care of the Tommy D commission wow. before you do the imagine thing wow way to, way, way to create a controversy put me up against john lennon thanks thanks Mick. <laughs> oh my God, my buddy. <laughs> listen this is the pal show the professionals and animal lovers show we leave you with this as i did last night for the first time i've ever read this out loud or, or said this out loud in front of people hello jovi in his total not that i had said that before jovi seriously it's my turn in his total commitment to nonviolence, Gandhi always included the animals by stating the greatness of a nation and its moral progress can be judged by the way its animals are treated. Make it a great day, everybody. Be compassionate. Thank you. Amen. Thank you.